Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and I am fascinated with retro type and old postcards. I also believe that there is a place for that in modern design. So today, we're going to dive into the appearance window and learn the gradient tool so we can get that look, or this look in particular. Let's not talk about it anymore. Let's get started. Before we start, I want to remind you that we are using the Essentials layout. To switch to the Essentials layout, just select Essentials from the top right corner of your screen. I also want to remind you that we are using Smart Guides. To enable Smart Guides, simply go to View and select Smart Guides or select Control U. One more thing worth mentioning is that we'll be using the bottom of the screen to share with you tips and tricks as well as key command recommendations. Let's create a new document. Our new document will be 1,000 points wide by 1,000 points tall. We'll have a single artboard and we'll have the RGB color mode. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool and we're going to start from the top left hand corner of the artboard and drag all the way down to the bottom right. Once that's done, we'll have a transparent stroke and we'll have a sky blue background. In this case, I've got a color pre-selected. If you want to enter the hex color code, it is 5BC0EB. Once we're done with that, we'll select Object, Lock, Selection, or select Control 2. Next, we'll select our Type tool, and we'll click anywhere on our screen. Once our Type tool is on screen, we're going to write the word Aloha. Once done selecting Aloha, let's select all of our type. And in our Character menu, let's select Punch Limit. If you don't have Punch Limit, it's available for free download at pixelsurplus.com. All you need to do is visit the website and do a search for punch limit. As an aside, if you don't see your character window, all you need to do is go to Window, Type, select Character, or press Control T. Once done with that, let's increase our type size to 150 points. Let's center our type element by grabbing our Selection tool and then aligning it horizontally and vertically. If you don't see your Align window, all you need to do is go to Window, Align, or Shift F7. All right, here's where the magic starts. If you don't have it open, and I don't right now, let's go to Window, Appearance. The Appearance window, just like it denotes, is an advanced way to, to manage and modify the appearance of any selected piece. I love this piece. This is one of my favorite windows in all of Illustrator. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our fill, then hold our shift key and click on the fill color. Right here, I want to enter in a dark orange. This is just a place color for now, but the color we're going to be entering is E55934. Once done with that, let's select our stroke. You can go to the bottom left-hand corner of your appearance window and click Add New Stroke. The stroke is going to be a default black, that's fine for now. And let's increase the stroke thickness to eight points. We deselect, that is not exactly what we're going for, but this is the advantage. You can drag your stroke down beneath your fill. Now that looks a little bit better. Let's modify our stroke a little bit. Let's select our stroke. We can open up our stroke to view what's in there. Then let's select effects. Distort and Transform, and Transform. First thing we're going to do in the Transform effect is we are going to create steps in the black stroke. Here's how we do it. We're going to move it one point horizontally, one point vertically, and then we're going to add six copies. Once we tab off of it, you'll notice the 3D effect starting to take place. Let's click OK and add another stroke. Again, go to the bottom left-hand corner of the Appearance window. We'll select Add New Stroke. And on our bottom stroke, we'll hold our Shift key and click on the stroke color. Here, we're going to enter a lighter orange. That hex color is FA7921. Notice you don't see any change on your image. That's what we're going to do right now. Let's open up our Stroke menu once again. 
And with our stroke still selected, we're going to select Effects, Distort and Transform, and Transform one more time. Like we just did with the black stroke, we are going to move it horizontally one point, move it vertically one point, and then instead of having six copies, we enter six copies, you won't see it because it'll be behind the black stroke. What we're going to do is we're going to enter 12 copies. Once we tab off of that, you'll notice straight away that you can see the orange stroke behind the black stroke. Click OK. Since we've already done this twice, let's do it a third time. We'll select Add New Stroke. And on our bottom stroke, we're going to hold our Shift key, click on our stroke color. And we are going to enter our green. The hex code for our green is 9BC53D. Once we've entered that, again, you cannot see it because it is behind the other two strokes. What we're going to do is we're going to open our stroke menu. We're going to select Effects, Distort and Transform, and Transform. Again, we're going to move it horizontally one point, just like the others. Move it vertically one point, just like the others. And then instead of six copies or 12 copies, we're going to make 18 copies. When we do that, that'll make the last six visible behind the other two strokes. Let's go ahead and deselect our type to see what it looks like now. Right off the bat, that looks pretty cool, but we want to take it one step further. And that step is going to be adding a gradient to our type. So let's move on with that. The first thing we'll do is we'll select our type and we'll make sure in our color menu on the bottom left hand of your screen that our fill is the one in front or selected. Once we've got that done, let's select gradient tool and then let's select our default gradient. Once we've done that, let's take our gradient and let's rotate it 90 degrees. Once that's done, let's start adding colors. Here's how we do that. By the way, if you don't have your gradient tool visible, you can always go to window, gradient, or control F9. Let's grab the leftmost marker on our gradient slider and let's double click on it. From the top right hand corner of our gradient menu, let's click on this. Let's change from grayscale to RGB. Once done, from our hex code, let's enter in our dark orange. That color is E55. 934. Once that's done, let's take that color and move it to 30% under location. That's going to shift the color a little bit higher. Next thing we'll do is let's click on the gradient slider anywhere to the right of the orange. Next thing we'll do is we'll double click on that and we'll change the color to our green. The hex color for our green is 9BC53D. Now with our color still selected, you'll notice it's highlighted on the slider itself. And we're going to change the location to 30.1. Notice our previous color again was 30. Once that's done, you can see the hard line starting to develop. We're going to continue with that. Again, to the right of our previous slider color, we're going to click anywhere. We'll double click on our new color tab. And once again, we will change that color to 9BC53D. Once done with that, let's select our location and let's enter 35. You can see it's starting to take place. Let's add the yellow in. Again, anywhere to the right of our last color tab, we'll click, we'll double click on it, and let's add in our yellow. The color code for the yellow is FDE74C. Once done, let's move our yellow to 35.1. Remember our last screen was at 35. All right, let's keep going. Again, to the right of our previous yellow, we'll click, we'll double click on our color, and again, we're going to add our yellow. Once we've entered in our yellow, let's change the location to 40. And we're getting close. For our last one, let's grab our end slider and we can click and drag it to make it more visible or we can just click on it. Let's double click on it. Let's change our color value to RGB. And in our hex color, 
let's change it to our original orange. Again, that is E55934. Once we're done with that, let's change our location to 40.1. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our type. We can do it two ways. We can hold control and click anywhere on the screen just like that. Or of course, we can grab our selection tool, then click anywhere on screen to deselect. Looks pretty good. Let's just add a little bit more style to it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our type. Let's grab our rotate tool, double click on our rotate, and let's rotate that eight degrees. That gives it just a little bit more flair, just a little bit more style. Now here's what's really cool about modifying the appearance of the type versus changing it to a shape or doing any other thing is we can grab our type tool and we can change what this says. In this case, Aloha is a little bit stereotypical, so we don't wanna do that. We wanna change it around a little bit. Let's change the word to Hawaii. We'll select all of our type, write in Hawaii. Once done with that, let's grab our selection tool. We'll click anywhere on screen, or of course we can use control click as well. Looks good. Let's go ahead and center this and let's take another step. We'll click on our type, and once again, we'll align it horizontally and vertically. Let's deselect. What about scaling our type? And this is a huge advantage of the appearance tool as well. We can scale the type and we can manage our type just as easily. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on Hawaii and let's copy and paste in front. You can always go to edit, copy, edit, paste, but in this case, we're going to select control C, control F. Let's arrow our duplicate directly above Hawaii. We do this by holding our shift key down and arrowing it up vertically. Holding our shift key moves our element in 10 point increments. Looks good there. Now let's go back and add the words aloha from. Let's grab our type tool. We'll select our type, we'll select all of our type, and we'll write our words. Grab our selection tool, we'll click off of it once again. And it's a little big, but you notice right away how easy it is to change this. Let's go ahead and scale it so it can fit in around Hawaii pretty easily. Here's how we do that. We'll select Aloha from, we'll select our scale tool by double clicking on it. Next, we're going to scale it down by 30%. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go under options and select scale strokes and effects. We'll click okay. And that looks pretty good. We'll grab our selection tool and let's move it between the H and the I. Looks pretty good right there. Let's deselect. I like how it looks. This is a great look, but I think the Aloha from is just a little bit too busy and you really can't see the strokes as well as you really want to. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and make an easy change. Let's select Aloha from and let's go back to the appearance window. First thing we wanna do is we wanna change our fill color because that's just a little bit too busy. We'll select Aloha From again. And in our fill, let's just do this real quick. In our fill, let's click on our fill color and let's grab any color, it doesn't matter, to start. And we'll click off of our color just like that. Now that we've eliminated our gradient, let's again hold our shift key, click on our fill, and let's enter in our dark orange. Again, that color is E55934. Looking good. Let's play with our strokes a little bit here. Notice that the green and the orange strokes make things a little bit too busy, so let's delete those. The way we do that is we select each stroke. We'll hit the trash can on the bottom right of our window. That's gone, let's do the same thing with our orange stroke. And we are back in business. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna modify our black stroke just to make it a little bit thicker, a little bit more visible. So we're going to click on that and we're gonna change our stroke thickness to four. Now let's transform it to give it just a little bit more depth as well. So we'll click on our transform button and we're going to change the number of copies from six to eight. Next thing is we'll grab our select tool. We'll click anywhere on screen. That looks pretty good. Let's do one more thing to make sure everything stays together. We're going to drag across both elements. Go to Object, Group. Center horizontally and vertically one more time. Deselect our piece and we are done. 
So there you have it. One thing before I cut out of here, use this look as a launching pad to jump into your own looks and see what you can get out of it using the appearance window and the gradient window. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. I'd appreciate it just a little bit more if you subscribed. I'll see you next time. See ya.